Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for a very special masterclass on what is your poop telling you? My name is Britt with Forum Health, the first nationwide network of integrative and functional medicine providers. For those of you not familiar, Forum Health goes beyond traditional healthcare by combining functional and integrative medicine with advanced treatments and technology, data analytics, and a collaborative relationships to offer our patients personalized and transformative results. Our patients had exclusive access to breakthrough treatments, results-driven wellness programs, health content, and a team of experts to partner with you on your journey to a healthy and vibrant life. To learn more, visit us at forumhealth.com. All right, let's get started. Our panelists tonight are Dr. Shilpa P. Saxena of Forum Health Tampa and certified health coach Nicole Ziner of Forum Health Utah. Dr. Saxena is a board certified family physician with 15 plus years of integrative medicine experience. She serves as the chief medical officer of Forum Health and is globally recognized as an expert and leader in lifestyle medicine, cardiometabolic health, hormone disorders, autoimmune conditions, and clinical nutrition. She served as CEO for her Seven Med Institute practice, internationally known for contributions to the lifestyle-based group medical appointment model. She also founded the Center for Living Wellness and was chief of medicine for the N1 Health Physician Network. Additionally, Dr. Saxena serves on the faculty of the Institute for Functional Medicine and is a fellow of the Arizona Center for Integrative Medicine. She previously was on the faculty at George Washington University's Department of Clinical Research and Leadership and develop Forum Health's medically supervised gut detox program, GDRX. Certified health coach, Nicole Ziner, oversees the design, development, and execution of Forum Health patient education and wellness programs. She previously operated a Chicago-based functional medicine clinic, helped develop a nutraceutical line, and created an integrative addiction recovery program. Nicole currently serves as president of the nonprofit Alliance for Addiction Solutions, which offers functional solutions for mental health and addiction recovery. Nicole earned her Bachelor of Science in Biochemistry and Nutrition from the University of Utah. Welcome, ladies. Welcome, Dr. Saxena and Nicole. Hi, Britt. Hello, everybody. Well, Proud to be here. Thank you so much for answering all of our questions tonight. This is a big topic, and it's very evident by the record number of registrants we had for this webinar. Um, we all know we should take care of our gut health, but most of us don't know how to do it. We fail to do so. Um, and as a result of our modern diets, sedentary lifestyle, and really overexposure to stress and toxins, our gut health is really out of whack. So I'm very excited to talk to you both tonight. Um, Dr. Saxena, I first want to start with you. Please, if you could share with our audience, why is gut health so critical to our overall health? And what bodily functions are connected to our gut? So that's a big question, but let's <laughs> kind of hit the main topics. And Nicole, like jump in if I'm forgetting some big one, because it is the end of the day. But so it, the first thing that you want to think about is your gut is the main, the gut, I'm going to call the gut everything from your mouth all the way down to your anus. Okay. Sorry, I had to say the word. We're going to be saying some special words during this webinar. It's just <laughs> anatomy. Most of us have one, so it's all good. So <laughs> the first thing to know is, is that your digestive system, the way we reference it starts with your mouth, ends up in the excretion organ. And all along that tube, there is a trillion bacteria. And so when you talk about the tube, it's like starting in your mouth, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, all this, but there's a trillion bacteria. And I think of it like this important neighborhood. And if you've thought of any neighborhoods, there's always like the good neighbors who put up the Christmas decorations and organize the neighborhood watch. And then you have plenty of people in the neighborhood who are just kind of taking up space. They're not necessarily good or bad. They just take up real estate. So there's, you know, a, a bunch of bacteria that just do that along this tube. And then you have uh, the people who let their grass overgrow, or maybe, you know, do some things that are less favorable to the neighborhood, but not taking anybody down. And then you have like the drug dealer who might be in the neighborhood. Okay. Now, when you think about this tube, the composition of those bacteria determine everything about your health. Okay. So when we talk about gut health, we're really talking about 
the microbiome or these trillion bacteria, that neighborhood, that real estate. So your 80, 70 to 80% of your immune system lives there. And your immune system is like your security system. And of course, the majority of it lives there because what's the main place that we take things from the outside that could be threatening to us and put them inside our body? The gut tube. So that's why 80% of your soldiers are right there, like ready to make sure that you didn't take down something that could get into the body and really harm you. So your security guards are in those bacteria. And if those bacteria start to get upset, they will trigger alarms, which we'll call inflammation. And inflammation from your biggest kind of squadron of immunity is going to cause it is the single most important cause of every chronic disease, cancer, diabetes, heart attack, stroke, dementia, you know, you, autoimmunity, you name your disease. If it goes on for a long time, it's rooted in inflammation. If it's rooted in inflammation, it has a high probability of being rooted in your gut. So that's why your gut is so important to health of your entire system. It's like the entryway for all the good nutrition. It's the exit for all the garbage. And it's your security system. So is that a is that good? I think that's a great. I, I really like the neighborhood analogy. So it's easier for people to understand. But it really is tied to everything. Um, now you kind of touched upon a little bit. What are some you know when your gut health is unhealthy, uh, when it's imbalanced, Nicole? What are the some of the symptoms that people might be experiencing? Mm. Yeah, so there's the more commonly known GI or, or gut imbalance symptoms like bloating or pain, constipation or gas. Um, those are all definitely a sign that your body's giving you that something's out of balance. Um, but then there's the ones that maybe people don't directly tie to their gut health. And uh, something that I'm really passionate about is the connection to your gut and your brain and how closely those are connected. And even to the point where a lot of um, people in the field refer to the gut as the second brain. There's so many, uh, you know, so many nerves in there and, and it's so directly connected to your brain. And also a lot of your happy neurotransmitters like serotonin and GABA are produced in your gut. And so if your gut is imbalanced, that has a direct connection to how your brain feels. And if you feel happy and content and, and balanced in your life. Um, so yeah, definitely that. And then as, Dr. Sixen had talked about, you might not think that because you're eating, you know, poor foods or that, or, you know, processed foods or sugar, that that could be connected to your knees hurting or, um, you know, brain fog or something like that. But it's all related to the inflammation that's being caused in your gut and is spreading to the other parts of your body too. So, so definitely there's a direct, you know, your stomach's gurgling and you're like, oh, that was a crappy meal. I, I shouldn't have done that or acid reflux, something like that, where you're like, oh, that was definitely my food that caused that symptom. But there's also those, those sneaky ones that can even be the next day, like a food hangover from, you know, gluten or dairy or, you know, a food allergy that's causing a lot of symptoms too. Yeah. I'm so glad you mentioned the connection between the gut and the brain, because most people don't make that connection at all. Why am I feeling depressed or anxious or have brain fog or can't focus? So that's very, very interesting that they're both connected. Um, so now that we know about all these different symptoms, Dr. Saxena, how does your gut health become imbalanced? What are people doing to just throw this whole system out of whack? Okay, great question. <laughs> Break it Let down. Tell, let's talk about how original design, whether you say God or nature, created our system so that you know how it was meant to be. And then every time you can kind of keep a mental inventory, when I say something that didn't happen in your life, you could be like, oops, oops. And the more oops you get, of course, the more this gut microbiome can be thrown off and then start causing the inflammation and you know, poor detoxification. And that causes a whole poop storm in the body. Okay, we're gonna see how many times we can use the word poop in this webinar. So, okay. <laughs> So according to original design, when you are in your mother's womb, the tube from your mouth to your anus has no bacteria. It's what we call sterile because you're inside mom's womb. You haven't been exposed, but if you were born naturally, so by, via vaginal birth, that's where you get your first set of good bacteria, the good neighbors. You get your first good neighbors coming out the natural way. 
And then the second place that you're meant to get your good neighbors is on the skin of your mom's breast. So from breastfeeding. So if you were not born naturally and you are not breastfed, you already have a microbiome that's set up towards inflammation, confusion, intolerance, weakness, overreactivity. And so it's not uncommon for people who've had that kind of setup to be fussy babies, colicky babies, uh, babies that don't sleep, babies that need to be held all the time. That's, a, that's just a clue that the microbiome is off. Then the kids next, if you're the person who had ear infections and throat infections and eczema and asthma, classic sign. So the whole allergy asthma thing is a classic gut problem related in inflammation from your microbiome being a little too hypersensitive because it's like triggered so easily. Um, then when you're going through life, it's not uncommon that we start eating processed foods, packaged foods, and these chemicals kill off your good guys. And when they kill off your good guys, think about the real estate. When you lose good guys, even from an antibiotic, so think about the times you've had antibiotics, you kill off your good neighbors, there's open real estate. Well, let's say there's open real estate and that day you decided to eat a rare steak, okay? And it might've had something in it that wasn't properly cooked. Well, here comes a little drug dealer who's like, hey, here's an open house right here. Let me just go ahead and settle in. Right. So this is how we slowly but surely lose our good guys and add in the disruptors in the neighborhood. And, you know, you can kind of imagine that the neighborhood starts changing its tone. Like it starts to become a little bit more hypersensitive or, you know, if you will, inflamed and irritable. Um, the other thing that is a huge um, problem in today's society is stress. So chronic stress and stress could be psychological, but it can also be physical. Like if you're working the night shift, that's stressful to the body to a certain extent. So stress actually causes in the microbiome, it can cause the certain bacteria to start shifting from good to bad. But more importantly, we're gonna talk about how that gut tube that has all the bacteria, it should be like all the, all the cells that line that tube should be like shoulder to shoulder with each other, like brick and mortar. And they should be like no leaks. And there's this term called leaky gut. And when you have stress, the mortar starts to crack. And when you eat bad food that, and when I, what do I mean by bad food? Bad food is what I'll call man food. Like if man made it, man touched it, man, the more man got involved with it, the more it's fake food versus what you may call earth food or God food or whatever you want to view it. Right. But fake food starts to break down mortar, stress breaks down mortar, chemicals breaks down mortar. And when you start breaking down mortar, then when next bits of chemicals come down or bad sugar or bad, like let's say there was yeast on an apple, well, that stuff leaks through, through what we call leaky gut, it leaks through the mortar and it gets access to the blood supply. And that's when your immune system that's you know floating around in your blood supply goes, siege, what the heck? This wasn't supposed to leak through. And so then, inflammation starts. And so remember inflammation, any diagnosis that ends in itis. So how Nicole said arthritis, knee pain could be arthritis, sinusitis, bronchitis, tendonitis, anything with itis is likely linked to some sort of gut dysfunction because 80% of your immune system is right there causing the inflammation. So does that help? Like that's, those are some of the big ones that just take down a gut. Yeah. And what's scary to think about, because all of us, you know, eat processed food here and there, or some of, some of us eat it on a regular basis, um, or not eating whole foods. So it, it's, it's scary when you think about it, all the effects that trickle effect that it has throughout your body. Mm -hmm. um, but no, that was a great explanation. There's a lot of bad guys, I'm sure moving in. With leaky gut, do you know the percentage of Americans that have that? I Is it pretty high? high? I'm going to say that there's a lot of diagnoses that like, if you have allergies, multiple food reactions or multiple like environmental allergies, autoimmunity, um, irritable bowel, you know, uh, inflammatory bowel disease, like ulcerative colitis or Crohn's likely if you've got brain like symptoms, brain fog, depression, anxiety, I would say there's a strong chance you have leaky gut. 
Wow. That's probably a lot of people. I think so. It's probably a lot of people suffering out there. Yeah. Um, no, that was very, very helpful just to get that visualization. Um, Nicole, I wanted to ask you, kind of going off of that, let's say you have a um, healthy gut. What is considered a normal stool? And really, how often should we be making a bowel movement? Hmm. Now we're getting into it. Yeah. Now we're getting into it. <laughs> this is the myth buster right here. This Everybody is the nitty gritty of it all. Yes, this is, this is it. <laughs> so, and this is so important because as I talk to patients and I ask them, do you have any constipation? Do you experience constipation? And they're like, no, I'm, 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 you know, completely regular. I go once every two, three days and I'm like, oh, okay, well, let's dig into this. <laughs> so <laughs> to, to be considered regular and to have healthy bowel movement patterns at least once per day is like necessary, you know, obviously with travel and things like that, things can get thrown off, but just, you know, your, your daily routine should have at least one bowel movement. Um, I, Ideally, it should be two to three. Um, mm. That's that's a lot more than you know most people experience, but it actually is. It it should be sort of triggered by every meal. It should you know when food comes in, sh food should be coming out as well. So that's that's ideal. And as you continue to work on your gut health and um, you know the the connection to your gut and the nervous system, that continues to improve. Um, mm. But then shape wise it shouldn't be hard to push out. So it shouldn't feel like you're straining. It also shouldn't feel like there's some left in there. It should feel very complete when you're done. Um, no rabbit poos, That's, right. that means you need more fiber. <laughs> yeah. And also if it's too hard and it hurts to pass, that also likely means you need more fiber and more water. So ideally it should be like toothpaste. Um, it should come out you know, in a toothpaste-like shape and ideally curl onto itself. That means you have um, the ideal amount of fiber and also moisture or water in your body and you're processing everything, your bacteria is breaking everything down correctly. Um, another thing you wanna watch out for is making sure that you're not having regular diarrhea. That means there could be some pathogens present um, or some other things going on, so. Drug dealers. Pathogens yeah, for drug dealers. They're the yep. drug dealers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They took I a shop somewhere oh, in there. Drug dealers. <laughs> exactly. But everyone goes to the, the restroom tonight. That's what they're going to be thinking about. <laughs> yeah. There's no drug dealers. Are there drug dealers? Who's in there? In my <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, we all have some, okay? We all have some. The goal is they shouldn't be running the neighborhood. Right, exactly. Uh, yeah. So many other symptoms arise, yeah. One more point too is that I think some people don't even realize that being regular is available to them. I think some people, you know, and Dr. Sixan, I know you see this too. They're like, oh, I only go to the bathroom once a week. And that's how it's been since I was little. And that's just how it is. And our answer, as you'll learn on this, the rest of this webinar is that's your, that doesn't have to be how it is. <laughs> and that means you've had a problem since you were little. That doesn't exactly. make it normal. That just means that's how long you've been having the issue. Right. And so it, many times people have been C-section, bottle fed, antibiotics by the time they're five an elementary school time. And so, and then, you know, sometimes we tend to be um, poop holders, right? Like, Ooh, I don't want to go to the school bathroom. So we start creating behaviors that also make us retain stool. And um, there's just a lot of societal things that we do that doesn't make it normal just because we keep doing it. Right. And it's not something we really talk about growing up. Your parents don't really talk to you about that all the time. It's it's kind of a taboo t a subject, which it shouldn't be because it's so critical, as you both mentioned, to your overall health. Um, so kind of jumping off of that, Dr. Saxena, I, I know you said before that it's true that most people are constipated and just don't know it. Why is that? Is that true? Yeah. Just like Nicole yeah. was saying, like if you ask the average person, you know, are you constipated? They'll say no. And then I'll ask just like Nicole does. Okay. So tell us uh, about your bowel habits. And I'll say, well, okay. I poop every day, maybe every two to three days. Um, and you know, I use funny words. I'm like, so are you having torpedoes? Cause you shouldn't have torpedo Lincoln logs, no splashing. You should have, I say toothpaste. You should have like a ballerina that kind of swirls in like a swimmer dives in low splash. Um, you should not have sprinkler. So sprinkler is the, is like when it goes too far, but most people have Lincoln log torpedo poops and they mm. think that's normal. So, and then they also will have less than one a day. And then they, many people assume like, but I'm not pushing. 
doesn't matter if it's not toothpaste. So the, the reason why Nicole talked about like that swirly thing, like some people will liken it to like soft serve ice cream, oh, right. your, your sigmoid colon, which is the last S part of your colon before your, you know, rectum and anus start, it's S shaped. So if your stool is properly softened like toothpaste, it will keep this S shaped, you know, curve as it comes out. If you are having Lincoln logs, I don't know if you guys are old enough to even know what Lincoln <laughs> logs are, but they're like, you know, pieces that are around this. Yeah, right. Okay. Sorry. We got to make sure if you're under 40, you may not know. <laughs> um, so Lincoln logs, if they're coming out like logs, that means it's not even soft enough to make a curve. So that's already mm -hmm. like too hard. And I would just tell you, most people think that if they're having, I have many people who say I have diarrhea, I'm going three times a day. And I'm like, oh, is it spraying out of you or is it formed? It's formed. Oh, that's normal. But they're comparing themselves to what they think, you know, torpedo poops should be. Right, right. That's actually normal. I mean, if we really even think about um, the way our trends have been on stress, like what we, what we don't, what we call a average day is very stressful compared to what we might've thought stress was 50 years ago. Our weight even our perspectives on weight are shifting. And I'm not saying there's a good weight or a bad weight. I will say that there's certain weights that are probably gonna reduce inflammation in the body. So right or wrong, our, our perspectives are shifting. And then we're thinking, oh, well, I'm just like everybody. I just poop every two days. So I'm, I'm not constipated. Right. Yeah. That's really, really fascinating. Yeah, most of us probably are constipated. Have no, we just have no idea. And we, we just kind of gain feedback from what we know our family's doing or friends are doing, but we have no, no clue. Um, so to try to remedy this, Nicole, what can people do to regain a balanced and healthy gut? Now that we know the stuff that you're not supposed to do, what options are out there? Such an important question. And definitely, Dr. Sixana, as you were going through the timeline of you know, vaginal birth and um, antibiotic use and processed foods and stuff. I was like, oh crap, like I had so many antibiotics when I was younger. I ate so much processed food. I lived off processed food and sugar, like just, mm -hmm. that's all I did. And when I was in my early twenties, I had severe eczema, just so bad. I was on, you know, steroid lotions and I had the worst allergies. I'd have to shower during the day because I just, the pollen was just so irritating. And, and so I thought that was just my life. You know, I had skin problems, I had allergies. And what I didn't realize and why that timeline is so crucial is because it's, it's, it's those inputs that cause it, but there's ways to remedy it. And the two things are, are so important with gut health, removing the things that are causing you harm and then putting in the right nutrients so your gut can heal. And so Dr. Saxena is going to go into some of the, the nutrients in the, the program uh, for gut healing. But I think that the most important part at the beginning is taking out things that are causing your gut harm. And so it's, it's like trying to heal a splinter. If the splinter is still in there, like banding, bandaging it up really well, but it's still sort of irritating the area. So something that we work on a lot is elimination diets for gut health, because a lot of us are eating something that's causing that irritation and inflammation in our gut. And so like Dr. Sixana said, those, those cells that are supposed to be, you know, tight, they're constantly getting attacked by the inflammation. So definitely uh, elimination diet is really key. You can do food sensitivity testing and things like that through a functional medicine provider. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just interesting how many people know food is hurting their gut, but then continue to eat it day after day. And so it's really important to pair the removal of those foods with the right nutrients to, to optimize a healthy gut. Absolutely. We almost become addicted to certain foods, you know, to dairy or to gluten or even caffeine. I know myself, I was kind of addicted to caffeine, even though it wrecked my gut. And now I'm off of it completely, but you do become addicted to them. It's hard to break that. Yeah. It's a vicious cycle. Can I add something in yes. uh, about what Nicole's saying? Of course. So elimination diet, just for those who may not know what that is, is we remove the top eight to 10 most like irritating foods, allergenic foods from the diet. And I want to, I want to share how many people do this on their own and they do it incorrectly. So I don't want you to go through the grief of doing this. If you're doing it wrong, you might as well do it right and be coached appropriately. But here's the main tenant in functional medicine. There's something called TAC theory. 
okay? And ta let's, let's imagine that you're sitting on 10 tacks and that would cause a pain in your butt, right? And then you're gonna go to the doctor and you say, I have a pain in my butt. Now, or maybe you don't even go to the doctor. You just know I have a pain in my butt. So what most people do is they'll start removing one ingredient at a time. So they'll take the dairy tack and they'll remove it out of their butt and they'll go, well, I eliminated dairy for three weeks and my butt did not feel better. And that's why it's not dairy. So they put the dairy tack back in the diet and then they go, maybe it's gluten. You see, the problem is in functional medicine tack theory is, is if you don't remove enough tacks at once, you won't even know if it's the right tack. And so many people who have one food allergy might have two or three. And if you don't remove all three of them at once, you can't even tell you're better. And then you keep like looping in this, like, well, maybe it's caffeine, maybe it's sugar and you can't find. So when you do a proper elimination diet, you eliminate at the same time, eight to 10 foods that are most likely the tax in your butt. And when you do, most people will feel a lot better. And then what we do is with the help of a coach, we go through and we reintroduce one at a time. And this, I wanna say it sounds simple, but there is an art and a science to doing this correctly. And so you're welcome to try to figure it out on your own, but I really advise that you consider having a provider or a coach walk you through it because it, it's not the easiest thing to do. It's so doable. I mean, we have ton, thousands of people who've done it with success and people from all walks of life, like all ages. I mean, we do, we do elimination diets and variations on it with pediatrics, two-year-olds with severe eczema and asthma that want to not be reliant on seven medications at three years old. So just remember, if you're doing it on your own, you can't do one ingredient at a time. It's, it's very unlikely to give you the ahas with the elimination diet. Right. Yeah, I'm so I have a good that. comment on that too. So me talking about my skin issues and allergies, I did exactly what you just talked about, Dr. Saxena. I took out gluten. I was vegetarian. I took out dairy and I was still struggling. Like I was like, I'm eating so healthy. And I was obsessed with nutrition back then. But it wasn't until I did the full elimination diet with a coach and then the adding in the right nutrients was a game changer for me, but I no longer have any skin issues, not a touch of eczema, no allergies at all, not even the sniffly nose like during, you know, spring and uh -huh. stuff. So yeah, it's, it's the power of like doing it in the right way because it is, it is a process that has to be done in the right order. Um, so yeah, thank you for explaining that. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, that helps a lot. Because I think you're right. A lot of people feel like, oh, I can do this on my own. It's easy. I kind of know some of my triggers, but really that isn't the right way to go around it. Um, Dr. Saxena, I still wanted to talk with you about, we kind of are you know, starting to go into it. How does a, a medically supervised gut detox program, like the one we hear, have here at Forum Health called GDRX, how does that work to help repair and really restore gut health? Yeah, that's wonderful. So let's break down the words. So number one is medical. Okay. Medically supervised medical. So mm -hmm. people like society has become very interested in getting healthy, which is wonderful. And there's many people who like to use the word detox and detox can mean a lot of different things to different people. So when we say it's a medical detox, it's actually a comprehensive full body detox. It's not just a tea. It's not just a, you know, drink this soup or, you know, it's not like paprika and cabbage, or it's not like piecemeal. It's full medical because it's for the purpose of creating resolution by looking at the root cause of something. We're trying to, we're trying to have you stop having the allergies, the eczema, the autoimmunity, the arthritis, the depression. Okay. So it's medical, like it's treatment, then it's supervised. So you know, if you're going to do something that's powerful and, and if you're relatively, you know, unwell, like what do I mean by relatively unwell? I think a majority of the American population is unwell. They're walking around. I call them the walking unwell. You know, you're, like, you're not bed bound, but you're unwell. So you should likely be supervised, especially with many Americans in their 30s, 40s, 50s, being on two, three, four, five medications. You probably want to know from a trained provider in this, like, hey, do it this way, adjust this medication. This is what happens to birth control pill when you do this, you know, like important things. So medically supervised. And then there's the word gut. 
So we've been talking about the microbiome. And in addition to, like Nicole said it beautifully, you remove the bad things and you put in the right nutrients, but we personalize that based on, okay, uh, you are, let's say you're a ethical vegan. Okay, well, we, then we need to figure out how else can we get good B12 into the system? How else can we get anti-inflammatory oils in, right? And so that's gut in addition to everything else we've been talking about. And then detox. So your detox pathways is not just pooping. It's your liver working right, your kidney working right, your skin sweating right. So there's so many, if you will, holes that need to be managed for you to get the garbage out. And so we've got medically supervised gut detox. And then the last word is program. This is very structured. We not only have gotten it down to a beautiful like set of resources, guidance with personalization, but we've actually put it in clinical trial. We've, we've had thousands of people go through this and we've done labs on people pre and post and we've shown that we reduce inflammation 40% with this program. So, you know, it's not just this haphazard set of directions with, with no clear understanding of why we're doing it, how to do it, and do we get results? Like, I think that's really important when you're trusting your body to, to a program. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I think there's, I mean, I've been through it twice now. And there's so much education that comes with it and so much support because it's difficult to detox. It's difficult to let go of foods that you might be addicted to, sugar and caffeine and processed foods. And being able to have a health coach is so critical for your success. Somebody who understands what you're going through and knows you personally. And Nicole, I know you can attest to that. You've helped so many people. To yeah, I, mean, I think you're spot on. Sometimes it is, it's the knowledge and then it's also the emotional side of letting go of food and, and yeah, so that it's definitely good to have support and accountability. And I've also done the program a couple of times myself, and I can honestly say that my health is better than it's ever been, even, you know, eating healthy all in my twenties and exercising. And, uh, one thing that has also improved with me as my gut health has improved. It's my mental function and, you know, memory and brain fog and mood. And so just how connected that is to, to the overall program and, and gut health. And I do have to say this one thing. I think the perception of it on the front end occurs as hard because relative to the way we eat and live, it seems so like, what? You don't want me to have sugar for four weeks? <laughs> yes, yes, you can do it. And then we give you like an invitation to like all these other wonderful foods you do have access to. There's no caloric restriction to this. So it's not like a deprivation in terms of calories. So people get to eat. And many times people will say they're full with this program. Like oh, I can't eat more. I'm, I feel full. And that's because your body's actually getting nourished for the first time. So that's, that's one thing. And we have people at the end of it that are like, do I have to put these ingredients back? Cause I feel so great. It's very common. We're like, yes, you do. We got to figure out which one is the real tack because we don't want you to be on an elimination diet forever. So when you graduate from the elimination diet and you find your food triggers, now you're on a food plan. So like my food plan is gluten-free mm -hmm. and, you know, I can get away with cheese, thank God, but <laughs> I cannot get away with milk. So mm -hmm. that's my modified food plan. It's my modified elimination diet, but it's not really a diet. I just look at it as like, this is how I eat now because those two ingredients is no bueno for my gut. The, the right. neighborhood does not like those two things. <laughs> they're, it, they're, they're the drug dealers. Yeah, you don't want them. Yeah. It starts out scary for most people, but it ends up being empowering. You finally learn what foods serve you and what foods are harming you. And it, it is, and then it becomes a choice. It's not like you can't ever eat gluten again, but when you do, you're, you have that knowledge of, okay, I'm eating this, but I might feel crappy tomorrow, but you're still an adult. You can still make that choice. doesn't mean you, you know, can never do those things again, but overall your health just improves dramatically with that being armed with that knowledge. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, I know when I went through it, I thought, oh, I'm going to feel deprived, but really there were so many delicious recipes. And then people who are also going through the program, we have a, a special a private Facebook group and people will post their own recipes on there and they're delicious. And they're, they're meals. I still cook today and would cook for people coming over. So 
um, the deprivation really isn't there. It's just kind of getting past those foods that you're so used to eating. Yeah, it's psychological. Um, it is, it's psychological, but that's when the, where the health coaching comes into play and that the supervision right. comes into play. Uh, and you end up, I know for me, I had so much more energy. You know, once I got past yeah. the first three, four days, I had energy and I felt great and didn't need caffeine and didn't need sugar and all these different things. So like you said, Nicole, it is really very empowering. Um, before we wrap up, and I, I'd like to open up the class to questions from our audience, because a lot of questions are starting to come in. I know <laughs> this is a big topic. Um, I'd like to ask each of you, what's the biggest thing that people should take away from tonight's conversation? Oh, goodness. Be good to your gut. I mean, just be good mm. to your gut. I mean, you know, a yeah. hundred years ago, grandmas and moms asked, if you didn't feel well, they're like, did you poop? It's like a, it's the, it's, it's one of the top three questions that, yeah. um, you know, a caretaker would ask you. Right. And I want you to, I want you to consider your takeaway is pay attention to your gut and how it's linked with your systems. Do you notice that when your gut's unwell, your eczema flares more, that your knees flare more, that your brain doesn't work? Like those are connections that you get to have a choice about. Do I want these things to constantly be off balance or do I want to figure out the foods that could be the triggers or what are the nutrients my body is missing? Because when these foods come in, the foods that your body doesn't like, it's kind of like bombs going off. Mm -hmm. And then when bombs are going off, I want you to think about like mucus building up, just like if pollen gets into your nose and you're allergic to it, it makes mucus because your nose is like, whoa, pollen. And it's trying to stop the flow of any extra pollen. I just want you to think like mucus and mucusy poops is a sign that your gut is in war with something going down. And when mucus is there, tell me how well you think it'll absorb your grass-fed steak that you're gonna have or the beautiful you know, salad you're gonna have. It's not gonna absorb the nutrients. And so a lot of people with gut issues start to have the double whammy. They, they have the inflammation, they've got things that don't belong, but then they're starting to become undernourished, which then it's like your body is starving for nutrients and things just start to break down. Wow. Yeah. So really being aware, hyper aware of how your body is reacting and be good to your gut. That's mm -hmm. great. Yeah. For me, I think the biggest takeaway I'd like people to have is that, well, first that I think we can all use a gut detox. We're all exposed to processed food and sugar. And even if we eat so clean, you know, we're unintentionally exposed to pesticides and, and things that throw off our biome. So I think, you know, we can all use a good clean out and, you know, just, just that alone just improves your health. And then like Dr. Sixena said, just using what your gut and your stool is telling you is a, a little tool every day. Like it's, it's literally your body being like, Hey, I need more vegetables. I need more water. Like it's asking for this every day. You just need to know how to like, you know, read the tea leaves. And so just kind of being aware of that. And like, if, you know, if you're having regular stools and then suddenly they're off, you know, look at your diet. Did I start eating more dairy or, you know, have I been eating more gluten lately? And so kind of listening to your body in that way. I personally, every time I'm choosing food or like what I'm going to prep for the week or something like that, I'm thinking, how is this going to impact my gut health and my brain health? You know, is this good for my gut? Is it good for my brain? And uh, just kind of guiding your food choices like that. Yeah. That really or keeps stress, kind of Yeah. Bad. Or stress too. <laughs> Pay attention yes. to stress in your gut too. It's a gut brain. It's true. Brain can cause gut issues and gut can cause brain issues. So that's why a lot of people with irritable bowel syndrome, it's triggered by stress because just like Nicole explained, your gut is your second brain. So that's why you have gut feelings. Mm -hmm. Literally you have gut feelings because the same things that create feelings here, create feelings in your gut. So your gut is like your second brain saying, don't do this bad. <laughs> <laughs> and you get better at listening to your gut when your gut is healthy. So that's another yeah. side effect of like healing your gut is like, you're just better at life, you know? <laughs> so good. These are like the best takeaways. I feel like I need to write these down and like put them on my fridge you know, <laughs> as a good reminder. Everybody should be <laughs> who's joined us tonight. Um, well, thank you ladies both so much. I would love to open up the class to questions from our audience. We already have several coming in. So We'll probably take the next 15 minutes or so and try to get to as many questions as possible. Um, if we don't get to your question, please know we still care. Uh, we advise you to uh, schedule a free 15 minute consultation with one of our health advisors and they can really help 
talk you through your options and get to know you a little bit better um, and figure out the best plan for you. So please know we'll try to get to everything. So let's take a look here and see what we have. Um, somebody wrote in and said, what about organic prepared foods? Are they still over processed and can they hurt your gut health? That's a great question. Mm -hmm. Nicole, you want to take that one? Sure. Yeah. So there are so many different labels on processed foods like paleo and keto and organic. And it definitely helps you guide in making a smarter choice. Generally, they, they do have better ingredients and they are healthier um, than their alternative, you know, conventionally conventional processed foods. But you are going to experience the best gut health if you're choosing earth food and food that's as far away from its, uh, or as close to its original state as possible. That's when you're going to be getting all of the fiber and all of the, the moisture and all the phytonutrients and even the bacteria from the soil, like, you know, just buying vegetables from farmer's markets and, you know, having actually some of the, the bacteria from the soil gives you more of the good guys. So it's, mm. if you're in a pinch, it's buy the organic version for sure. Um, pesticides also are bad for your gut. They can throw off the, the bacteria in your gut. Um, so better choice, but you're going to experience the greatest expression of health if you're eating foods that are not processed and, and more from the earth. Absolutely. And I think it, it, it's difficult to navigate the grocery store sometimes because there's so many healthy foods that really are very overprocessed. And, and don't really help your, your gut health or even your overall health uh, that, that much. Um, so that, that was a great question. Another person just wrote in, um, what about the color of bowel movements? Are there any alarming colors I should be watching out for? I can take this one and sure. Nicole, please add on. So in general, poop is supposed to be brown. I'm gonna call it like a milk chocolate color. If the poop starts to look like yellow, mustard, um, clay, uh, white or gray, these are signs that something in the digestive process are likely not working. So um, I would seek medical help to make sure it's nothing serious. If you have black tarry stools, literally like tar black, it means that there's likely bleeding up high. I mean, there are some medications that can cause it, but you really wanna make sure that there's no like mm, gastritis or esophagitis or uh, some sort of bleed up higher where the blood is getting dark and then turning things tarry by the time it comes down. If you have current jelly poops, that means like this maroony kind of globular and um, mixed in with the brown, that means you also might have a bleed, but maybe a little bit lower. And then if the, if you have bright red blood mixed into your poop, that's a little bit more concerning because it means that the bleeding is up higher and getting mixed into the poop before it comes out. If you have blood that kind of is on your toilet paper or on the surrounding like perimeter of the poop, and it's kind of you know, really bright red, it could be hemorrhoids. But again, I would definitely seek medical attention because, you know, colon cancer is on the rise. And I believe it's because one of the main causes of colon cancer is chronic constipation. If poop sits too long in the gut lining, that means the garbage that your body said, I don't want this is sitting right up against your colon wall, just waiting to, it's like sitting in the trash can waiting to be removed. Here's the other thing to know about poop. If it sits too long in your colon, your body will literally just break it down, bring the garbage back in. It doesn't make much sense, but because you were supposed to have pooped it out. So it's not going to let something sit for too long. So it will actually drag the chemicals back in. And that's not a good thing. Um, one of the most common things that dr drags back in is estrogen that was meant to be eliminated. And this is men and women. We, we make estrogen and then we're supposed to use it. And then the liver bags it up and sends it to the colon. And if you're constipated, that estrogen gets sucked back in, but then your body made new estrogen. So now estrogen is back it up, back it up, back it up, back it up. And when estrogen backs up, it makes colon cancers grow, prostate cancers grow, breast cancers grow, migraines happen. Um, I mean, think of like worse periods. It increases the risk for other GYN cancers like estrogen is good at the right level, but backed up estrogen that is not making it out the poop hole is a major, like a major cause of common things people come to see us for, migraines especially. Wow. 
Mm-hmm. It really makes you want to eat clean and very, very healthy. Yeah, um, it really does. You know, I had a, a, a question just came in, um, which is something I've always thought of. Is gluten harmful for everyone? And how does that impact the gut? I'll take this one. Okay. So the short answer is no, it's, it's not okay. harmful for everyone. And that's what the elimination diet helps you figure out is if gluten is a, a sensitivity for you. Um, there is some evidence that it can, that the gluten protein can contribute to leaky gut. Um, so, you know, soaking grains and, and things like that, like preparation method matters, like sourdough bread is, is a really great way to, uh, to eat gluten because uh, the fermentation helps kind of pre-digest some of those gluten proteins. Um, so yeah, there's ways to, to make gluten more nutrient dense and, and less reactive to your gut. But if you tolerate it fine and it's not a sensitivity for you, then it's not something you have to worry about eliminating. Okay. But we That's do want people to be gluten less. I mean, in general, gluten comes in things that are not generally healthy for you. Okay. Most people are not eating sourdough sprouted gluten bread. They're having white enriched flour, Mm. bleached, bromated, like it's, it's the chemicals that the gluten comes with. that's probably just as bad as the gluten. So it's the company that it carries. that's probably bad for you. And because Mm. that company that comes with the gluten is right there with the gluten, it creates the leakiness. And then the gluten comes in and the immune system's like, man, you're not good for us. And it could be partially the chemicals involved in gluten containing pastas and breads and pastries pastries heavily processed many times. Right. Mm -hmm. Like you said, it just goes back to avoiding processed foods, avoiding Mm -hmm. that. Avoiding, reducing. Yeah. Reducing, reducing as much as you can. Yeah. Um, Somebody just wrote in really good question. What causes poop to float? Ooh, I know that answer. Do you want to talk (laughs) about it? You go ahead. Okay. Floaty poops. It is because when you eat fat, your fat, if properly digested, should get broken down and pulled into your bloodstream. If you eat too much fat or you're lacking lipase, which is the digestive enzyme in charge of breaking down fat, if you're lacking it, then the fat builds up in your poop. And when fat builds up in your poop, it's like oily poop and oil will then have, if it's mostly oily, it'll float on top of the water. Interesting. Interesting. You heard it here first, people. (laughs) You heard it here first. No (laughs) floaty poops. No floaty floaty poops. (laughs) Um, Someone just wrote in and said, asked, what do you feel like are the top eight to 10 foods that that most people should remove? Okay, Nicole, you're the whiz at this one. (laughs) Sure. So uh, for our gut and liver detox program, we follow an elimination diet that focuses on the top allergenic foods. So um, for most people, removing these are going to help them see symptom improvement. And, you know, obviously there's exclusion. Some people can have, you know, random sensitivities, but, but these ones across the border are very effective when, when doing an elimination diet. So uh, gluten, corn, soy, dairy, eggs, peanuts, shellfish. Mm. Yeah. Those are top uh, sugar, caffeine. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes so citrus for some people. Yeah, citrus. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, sugar, <laughs> caffeine. Yeah. Alcohol. Alcohol. Oh. Somehow, alcohol. thousands of people have survived a detox without alcohol for a month. I just want you to know it can be done. You can do it, it after COVID. I think we all probably indulged more than enough. So we need to give our bodies a break. Yeah. Alcohol can be so tough on the gut. Yeah. Alcohol. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, again, we're not villainizing this stuff. It's just that your body needs, like you need a vacation, your gut needs a vacation. Like why right. shouldn't it get a reprieve from your, you know, kind of hectic, <laughs> abusive lifestyle? Your it consumption, yes, absolutely. It's for four weeks. <laughs> absolutely, yes. Um, let's see, we have so many coming in. Um, what can I do to help with constipation? Is there anything oh, that can be done like right now to help? Well, I would start like paying attention to the foods that you eat. Um, Mm -hmm. Like what we've been talking about, eat more earth food or God food and start reducing your package. You want to, many people don't drink enough water. So six to eight cups of water. 
I, you also want to do, um, movement. Okay. Like naturally we were not meant to sit in a chair for eight hours. So things get locked up in the gut, especially right there in the creases and your groin that those are where two important corners of your gut tube are. And if they're constantly kind of pinched, things will get backed up. So the other thing that you could do is remember that when you're doing workouts or when you're moving around the house, I want you to consider doing side to side, like exercises. If that means like, if you remember back on the day, you put your hands here and you touch your opposite toe, you could do that. You could do a little Jane Fonda and like bring your knees to your um, elbows. You can just twist, but twisting while standing milks your bowels. And that's mm -hmm. how, that's just an easy way to get like the, the softer bowels. Do not forget movement. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that I want to remember, it's water fiber. And some people go too low on their good oils and you need a certain amount of oil for lubrication for poop. So, you know, fiber, water, oil, good oil, and then mm -hmm. movement. Yeah. And one thing about that question too, that came to mind is that there's such a spectrum of reasons for a symptom. So, you know, there could be so many different reasons why someone experiences constipation. And for some people, all they have to do is take out dairy and they're great, you know, but for some people, they have to go through a lot more testing and, you know, even as much as, you know, like prescriptions to, to kill off any yeast overgrowth that they have, like candida. Um, so it could be, you know, just a simple answer or a more complex answer. The good news is there is an answer, <laughs> but some of them, you know, that's where it's really beneficial to work with a, a qualified practitioner that knows the ins and outs of what makes a healthy gut. I completely agree. Um, somebody just wrote in and said, what are some gut health friendly drinks? Mm -hmm. Okay. Water and shake. <laughs> thank you. For what, I've been, <laughs> what I've been drinking so um, this gut detox program, GDRX, is something that I started in my practice uh, 12 to 14 years ago, I would say. And I started it and I came up with this regimen. I use these functional foods. And what that means is it's pre-digested protein, a ton of great ingredients and things that help fix leaky gut, that reduce inflammation, and basically get the neighborhood working again. Mm -hmm. I have done one of these shakes for since 12 years now. I mean, of course, do I miss a, a shake every now and then for Sunday brunch? Cause I just want to have that. Yes. Today I'm drinking it in the evening because I didn't get to it, but I like make it a point to drink this. This thing is going to do wonders for your gut health. The other reason why I like it, I want you to think about this. A lot of people who have gut problems love to take a bunch of tablets and capsules. I'm like, you're expecting that your gut can break that down. And if the assumption is, is your gut is sick, why are you putting a bunch of capsules and tablets in there? That's hard on the gut. So mm -hmm. when you put it in a pre-digested hypoallergenic anti-inflammatory shake every day, I've basically got like my multivitamin, my multi-mineral, I've got stuff to feed my good bacteria. It's like all in there and mm -hmm. I, I, it's chocolate. Yeah. So like I get a chocolate well, shake every day. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So then I don't feel like um, deprivation. It doesn't feel like medicine to me. I don't feel sick. I just feel like, look how healthy I am. I'm having a shake. Yeah. I and really you, love this. So we can put it in the um, chat, I guess, um, how to get to this. In general, yeah. uh, th there's very few people that this is not okay for. Completely. And plus we have great recipes for, you know, all types of different shake recipes, depending on what types of fruit you like. And um, I actually, I put the link to our GDRX program in the chat function. Um, I'll also make sure to send this to everyone tomorrow. I'll be sending the recording out in case you missed anything. Don't even worry about it. Um, I'm going to post it again right now. Uh, so you can go there, look at over the information. We have um, health coaches to talk to you more about uh, the program and to answer your specific questions. Um, we'll probably take a few more questions, maybe if just a few more minutes. So again, if you have a question, uh, just chat us using the Q&A function right at the bottom of your Zoom dashboard. Uh, let's see, somebody just wrote in, what makes stool smell like chemicals or petroleum? I'm gonna say chemicals and petroleum. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <Toxins>. <laughs> you're, you're likely uh, 
off gassing through your bowels and mm -hmm. literally your bowels are trying to remove things. I would think that, I mean, I'll tell you that's very uncommon. So if that's happening, I think that's a reason to see a provider about that. Because if it's in your stool, I'm wondering what's in your body. Mm. Absolutely. That's a really good point. A um, couple people writing in now, you touched upon good oils. Um, people are wanting some examples. Can you give us some examples of good oils that you should be ingesting? Nicole, like Jeffy Nicole. <laughs> so before I get into the good oils, I want to talk about the bad oils. And bad oils can have such a profound negative impact on not only your gut health, but also your brain health and just overall inflammation. So bad oils would be anything that's heated. Um, it, it really just damages the fat and makes it rancid. It, it spoils the fat and your body tries to put those bad fats into your cell membrane. So it just doesn't end well in, in your body. So don't eat rancid fats that have been fried. Um, if possible. So avoid you know, heated oils. Um, and so vegetable oil, canola oil, soybean oil, those are all ones that you want to avoid whenever possible. So definitely check labels if you are eating. Did I say canola oil in there? Um, yeah. yeah, that's that's a good one. Yeah. So check, yeah, check labels. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so check, check labels um, and definitely, you know, avoid fried foods. But make sure one serving of fried food keeps your body inflamed for two weeks after ingesting. So that's one that it's not just like, oh, I'm having fries. It's like two for two weeks, I'm gonna feel more inflamed and more fatigued and more brain fog. Um, so that one uh, is important. As for good oils, things like olive oil and um, avocado oil, those are, are usually our top bets. Uh, coconut oil, extra virgin coconut oil is really great as well. Right. Those would definitely be the, the top ones. You know what I've noticed recently? I try to buy healthy snacks and I'm constantly seeing canola oil or safflower, safflower oil um, or, or sunflower oil in these healthy snacks. And that's not really doing any favors for my gut, right? Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. that's the one I noticed a big difference, especially when I go out to eat because they usually use those cheaper oils. And that's the one that like, it just wrecks me. Like I can, you know, eat yeah. such a clean meal, but it's cooked in a poor oil and it just, my right. gut is just a mess. So it's yeah, keeping mess. an eye out for that is also talking about the good oils. I forgot about ghee, clarified butter is, is also a really mm -hmm. healthy oil that actually feeds your gut. It has uh, butyric acid, which is really good food for your, the good guys in your gut. That's, that's ghee. Really ghee is, is what it's commonly called. Yes. And now you can find that at Trader Joe's. I know I saw that recently there. So it's really, it's available everywhere. Um, you big one at Costco too. You do that at yeah, like you very big one at Costco, exactly. He is um, from my country of origin. Ghee is so yes. easy to make. I mean, if you, uh, ghee, like, ghee is expensive at a store, make your own. Just buy your own grass-fed butter okay. or good quality butter and make your own ghee. It's so much cheaper. Oh, hmm. nice. Okay, our track. next webinar, we'll have a cooking, a cooking show with I'm you. I'm here right? for it. <laughs> just the rest of some really good recipes. Um, somebody just wrote in and said, how often do you have to do the GDRX program? Oh, let me answer that since I've been probably one of the marathoners here. Sure. Um, so when people first come to see us and they've never done anything really comprehensive as a gut detox program, we do the full 28 to 30 day you know, process. That's what we recommend. It, it turns out to be five weeks with the prep and all that kind of stuff. Um, please note that when you do GDRX, you will not be married to a toilet bowl. You will live a normal life. You will have, you know, just different anti-inflammatory foods. You will drink, you know, a couple of these shakes a day. Life will not be totally like taken down. It will be adjusted, but very functional for many people. Um, then when you finish with that, now what we do is I recommend that you do a week of it every three to four months. Why? Because you probably accumulated enough drama in a quarter that it's time to give it a little bit of a spruce up. So I liken it to AC filters. Like you can live as clean as you want to in the house, but you should be cleaning your AC filters every three to four months. So that's what most people need. Now, I will tell you for me, let's say within that three to four months, I went to Las Vegas for a conference. And as much as I tried to eat healthy, the salmon there was like buttered up and the vegetables were overly seasoned. And, and I still probably had some cake there. Like if I come back from that and I'm like, oh, gut doesn't feel good. I might do two to three days of the, like, like a mini detox days 
and get my gut back healthy. I'm not going to wait two months to do a week. I'm just going to do a little bit extra right there, get myself to my cruise control, and then I go to my shake a day. So that's what we counsel people on. Um, I don't recommend doing it, you know, for 30 to 37 days and then waiting a whole year and being all dirty, dirty, dirty and doing another five week program. Like, I don't think, you know, you don't clean your house that way. I, I don't know why you would keep your gut that way. That's such a, a great way to look at it and a great point. I know I always really feel the need to do it after the holidays because I've definitely indulged during that time. But um, no, that's a great way. It really is maintenance. It's yeah. maintenance. And again, goes back to listening to your body. Yeah. Listening to your body. Yeah. And the good part is, is you get better at it over time and you, yeah. and you remember how good you felt. And so when you kind of check in with that, like, oh, I'm feeling crappy. Like it's something you, you want to get back to that baseline of health. And so that's why we have patients reaching out to us. Like, oh, it's time for a detox. Like, we, you know, we don't have to like contact them. They're like, I, I know I need it. Like, I'm not feeling You know what it feels like when you feel clean and, and uninflamed. Um, yeah. One other thing that I was going to say, if you're like, I'm a regular person in many ways. Like I do not eat nine servings of fresh organic fruits and vegetables a day. I don't. Yeah. Do I wish I did? Yes, I did. But I don't <laughs> like between being a mother, a dog owner, you know, a daughter to, you know, four grandparents, four parents that we help take care of. I don't get this all in. And so I want you to know that one of my insurance programs is this daily shake, because then if I do have to, you know, let's say I skip a meal, that's not always good for me. And then sometimes I come home and I'm like, I'm going to make this prepackaged, you know, thing. I'm going to, I'm going to say that I sometimes put things in a microwave and eat it. Okay. Cause sure, yeah. I'm normal. <laughs> and when I do that, I was like, this is probably not the best for me, but this is what's going to have to work tonight after soccer practice. But when I do this most days of the week, it's basically like giving me a little wiggle room. I'm not trying to be bad, but right now my life doesn't allow for me to be like perfect with organic nine servings, exercise every day. Like I'm not calculating my macros. I've never been that person as a working mom and a business owner. So this is kind of my idiot proof, like insurance policy once a day, like, God, I'm going to try to be good today. But if I eat something packaged, here's the shake to help me with it. Like, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. I really, that's, if you're like me, this is your little get out of jail free card. You can't like be horrible and take a shake and think it's going to undo bad behavior, but it, right. it gives you a little bit of wiggle room when you're trying your best. And there's just some poop that happens there's some it yeah happens. so you can't be perfect all the yeah. time you're right yeah, it's you not can. possible you can't yeah. I like that it's your insurance shake I like that a lot <laughs> but I'm drinking mine tomorrow um well we've had so many questions come in and um I'm just going to take a few more before we wrap up tonight I know we could probably talk about this all night long Forever. very very easily um, someone wrote in and said, should be, should I be addressing my kids gut health? Mm. Oh yes. You should be addressing your kids gut health by taking care of yourself when you're pregnant. Okay. So for you women who are thinking about having babies, get your poops in order because your health is very much instrumental in your baby's health in the gut, like they don't have their microbiome, but you're still giving inflammation cues. If you're inflamed, that's what the fetus is growing up in. So, I mean, and then you go through the process, like, you know, try to get vaginal birth, try to bre breastfeed. And if these things don't happen, well, I take care of pediatric patients. I take care of pediatric, like newborns with issues. And I'm working on the same things we've been talking to you about. We just have to modify it a little bit for newborns and toddlers, but Absolutely. Why, why wouldn't, right. yes, right. <laughs> yes. With like four exclamation points at the end of it. Yeah. And, and we do have, bold and, bold. You know? yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and we do have uh, protocols for pediatrics as Dr. Sixena was saying, we don't use necessarily like the, the detox aspect of, of the shakes. Um, but we do have gut supportive and an immune supportive ingredients in there that works incredible. And a lot of that can also be tied to pediatrics uh, behavioral problems and, and trouble focusing and, you know, activity and agitation. That's all your gut stuff. So right. 
It, it would it would be a disservice for us not to mention that when you're, I mean, we've touched on it, but we take care of people with depression and anxiety by fixing their gut. We take care right. of kids with ADHD by fixing their gut. So this is not just like, oh, you're a good pooper. Like you can fix medicate like medication requiring mental health disease by mm-hmm. fixing and correcting and optimizing the gut microbiome. So when you, when you're looking at your kid and you're like, I don't want to give you a stimulant. I don't want to put you on an antidepressant. I mean, Mm -hmm. listen, they might need one in the interim. Um, so I'm not telling you not to give it like if you're working with a doctor, but I want you to know that that doesn't have to be the recipe for life. It doesn't have to be a prescription for life. If you just take care of the cause, which is the second brain. Plus you're teaching your child how to eat, how to live, right. How to nourish their mind and their body. So it's, you know, there's benefits, uh, two benefits to that as well. And it's a really very, very powerful. Um, ladies, they, oh yes, go ahead. Can I say one thing just for of you? Of course, yes. yes. Like, just as a mom, I learned functional medicine when my kids were like one in three. So by the time, you know, my older one was hitting four, I was like deep into this stuff and I'm starting to eliminate stuff from their diets. And they're like the weird kids at birthday parties. And, you know, like, here's your gluten-free pizza. I know everybody's eating from the other box, but here's yours and here's your sugar-free cupcake. And listen, I'm sure they were partially scarred by it at that time. Um, But, you know, they cheated every now and then when there was a school birthday party and they got into the, you know, cupcakes. Like I wasn't like overly vigilant and fearful, but I tried to, you know, bring these things in. And when my kids would go to birthday party and they would say, hey, can I just have that piece of cake? And I'm like, sweetie, you can have that cake, but are you okay with whatever it's going to cause? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's not going to be a problem. Then they would eat the cake and that night they'd be in their bed, especially since they had healthy guts overall. Like, oh, me, me, my stomach hurts. I'm like, sweetie, I can't suck it back out. Like, what do you think that is? Could it be the cupcake? Like, yeah, let's not do that next time. You think maybe we'll make a different choice. And sometimes they remember and sometimes they don't. Now my daughters are 18 and 20 now. And I will tell you, that I planted the seeds for this kind of connection. I didn't make it like you're a bad kid, you're eating gluten. Uh I just constantly reinforce like, hey, this is what we're trying to do. How is your poops? Like it's a joke at our house that we talk about poops at our dinner table. And when friends come over, they're like, Mimi, please do not bring up poops right now, okay? But anyway, it comes up anyway. So my kids go through the normal rebellion as teens. I'm I'm just letting y'all know, like this is normal. This is, you know, my daughter's like, hiding Cheez-Its in the trunk of her car. This is like her drug is like gluten and dairy in the form of a Cheez-It, you know, because that's her counter, you know, that's her drug dealer stuff in the car. And now they're both in college. So they have full ability to eat whatever they want to. And I would never know. And they are choosing to eat healthy now because they have for their whole life been trained on, well, how'd that food make you feel? Had that food affect your brain? Had that do for your um, soccer performance? Like, oh, you were tired. What did you eat last night? Uh, Oh, did you sleep well last night? So you keep putting these cues into people and kids and then they self-select for this kind of behavior because at some point they're they're gonna be like, oh no, I do wanna have a healthy gut because I like the way it feels when I poop normal. And I like the way it feels that I have great brain energy during a test. So I put that out there because they weren't perfect kids. There's no such thing, but they're, kids are smart and they will, I always say culture. I don't say I've learned culture is caught, not taught. Please do not mm-hmm. preach to your ch- kids to do something that you are not doing by example, because they will follow your example, not your words. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. How empowering to teach your children, how their body works, how their body and mind <laughs> works so that they can make good decisions. You're not denying them. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. It's, it's brilliant. It's, it's like brilliant. a healthy like relationship. Well. <laughs> Yeah. It's like a healthy relationship with food rather than an abusive relationship with food. Like, I feel like a lot of people have an abusive relationship with food that they're eating it and it's hurting them, but they still keep staying in that relationship. And whereas this is like, I'm only going to choose food that's, that's good to me back. Right. Yeah. They figure that out. And, and adults are just grown up kids. Like when we're, when we're working with adults, like, listen, we are too. Like, so we're going through the same process because when we tell them, listen, you're not going to be able to have gluten for four weeks. They go through the stages of depression, like what? Grief, shock, denial, 
you know, anger. anger. <laughs> and then finally acceptance. Like you go through it is so it's the mm. loss of a loved one. But people get to <laughs> acceptance and then they realize like, oh, there is life if this does become my trigger food. Exactly. Mm. Exactly. Those cheeses have have a lot of power for people. Yeah. Me included. Yeah. I, I get it. Drug dealers. They are drug dealers. I'm going to take one last question because we didn't really talk about this. And I think it's really, really super important. Somebody wrote in and said, I'm trying to lose weight. How is losing weight tied to the gut? That's a big one. Oh, yes. Yes. Um, I'll give my quick answer. And Nicole, you tell me what you I've forgotten. But inflammation. Remember how we said that when the gut's off, your immune system is off because that's where your immune system lives. And when the immune system is off, it squirts out inflammation. The, the main cause for fat gain is inflammation. Inflammation mm -hmm. is a survival response. And your body, when it's in survival response, wants to hold on to fat because it's like, we don't know when we're going to get food next. Let's just store it. So when your gut's ha happy and healthy, your body will let go of fat because it feels like we're good here. We can let this go. That's my... Uh, right. thing with the biochemistry part of it, but there's probably something yeah. more with it too. No, I think you're spot on. And that's something that I hear from, I've heard from thousands of people is that as they focus on their gut health, that they don't have to fight their weight anymore. And even, you know, women that have dieted and, and struggled and starved themselves for decades, once they clear up their gut and focus on food, that's good to them. They effortlessly lose weight and they, and the most beautiful thing is that they actually start trusting their bodies because their bodies are working the way that they, they're supposed to. And so, you know, feedback that I hear all the time is like, I can trust that my body is, is doing what it's supposed to. Like they just feel like they're, they're processing food correctly, their inflammation's low and they're eating nutrient dense food that, that isn't, you know, a food like substance. So your body knows what to do with it. Right. And a lot of people join GDRX not to even lose weight and then they lose the weight they didn't even realize that they had. And a lot of time when people do GDRX, uh, it's very common that we hear people get like, they'll come back and say, everybody says I look younger. They say my skin looks better. So mm -hmm. not only you, you don't just lose weight, you lose fat and you lose that extra puffy puffiness water. Yeah. Gain. Yeah. 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 So it's, it's good. It's good weight loss, not just weight loss that makes you like, you know, muscle wasting and weak kind of weight loss. Right. Because you're nourishing your body. You're finally nourishing your body. Your yeah. body feels good. Yeah. I'm so glad we got to that question. Cause I know that's, that's a big one for a lot of people. Summer's coming up, you know, you want to look your best and um, they're definitely linked. Ladies, thank you so much. I think we need to do this again. We need a part two of this yeah, conversation this <laughs> and probably a part three and four, because there is a lot, there's a lot to it. And I just appreciate your expertise on this topic. Um, and I hope it helped uh, our listeners tonight. Um, for anyone listening, if you're ready to improve your gut health and really your overall health, um, reach out to the Forum Health Clinic nearest to you, or you can call us at 855-976-5578 to schedule your complimentary 15-minute consult with one of our health coaches. Again, that number is 855 855- Nine seven six five five seven eight, And please, I encourage you, share this information, share this class with your family and your friends. Everybody struggles with health and uh, or with gut health issues, every single person, right? Um, so please share it with them. And uh, in the meantime, also make sure you visit us at formhealth.com. Connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. We have tons of great health content um, on all types of different uh, topics and conditions. So please uh, connect with us there. We'd, we'd love to stay in contact with you. Again, ladies, thank you so much. And thank you to everyone who joined us this evening. We appreciate it. Happy thank pooping, everybody. So Happy, Happy pooping. pooping. <laughs> <Okay, bye. laughs> Take care. Bye-bye.